Hey everyone, Nick here from The Packaging School. As we promised last month, we're back here with former creative director Kevin Cagley and current curriculum developer Anna Ogletree to talk more about Anna's passion for packaging, specifically highlighting international metal can construction in this segment. By the end of this short lesson, you will be able to Discuss the aluminum two-piece beverage can design. Explain the use of steel for food packaging. Compare and contrast aluminum versus steel cans. Identify the type of adhesive used on steel cans. And summarize international labeling standards. Most beverage cans are going to be made um, of a two-piece construction. So this is the one piece and this is the second piece. So this two-piece, like this, the, I don't know what you call this section in the bottom, like that's just punched and that's one, that is the one piece. Yeah. Okay. And the second piece is the cap or the top. Yeah. So that's the typical overall construction of a two-piece can and they're usually made of aluminum. Or aluminum. Yes. Depending on how you want to pronounce it. <laughs> they are useful in containing mostly carbonated beverages because the carbonation expands inside the container and that gives strength and stability to the otherwise flimsy material. Mm. This is steel and these two are also steel. Steel is a stronger material and it is used for um, heat processed foods typically. That was gonna be my question, like what would cause someone to say, Aluminum over steel or steel yeah. over aluminum. Like I said, aluminum is sort of flimsy. So with heat processing, that usually creates some sort of vacuum or um, changes the air pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you look below this hot melt adhesive, actually this is cold. Never mind. I'm glad you're here because I would have, I have no idea. Cold melt, hot melt, patty melt. I thought this would be hot melt but it's actually got um, a cold type of adhesive here. Hmm. Um, so do you go into the grocery store and do this? I <laughs> can neither deny nor... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. so you've been escorted out of a few grocery stores before then. Um, and we don't do that here. <laughs> but the steel, these ribbings here are not just to look pretty. They're actually there so that it allows it to expand and contract with the change in air pressure when the vacuum is created. Hmm. And most steel cans are going to be a three-piece construction. So you can see this seam here. This was one sheet and then it was made into a tube and the top and bottom were added. Another point, so this is from Mexico, made in Mexico but you can sort of tell that it was made for the United States because this here is required by law in the United States. So and, if you want to market or peddle your goods yeah. in the U.S., you have to comply with U.S. regulations. Mm -hmm. So some of these different regions in the world, if they're wanting to enter into the beverage game in the U.S., they have to put that information on the cans. Yeah. Okay. And you'll see that in different ways. Something I've noticed in lots of European packages, probably because there are so many languages in, packed together in that continent, um, they have lots of different uh, languages, like tons of different languages. And that makes sense. I mean, if there's anything that is global and everyone has experience with, it is packaging. I mean, packaging is, it, it's everywhere. Anna, thank you for giving us the, the sweeping, and this is a very broad overview. I'm sure we could have talked for another hour about all of these different regions and the different um, different ki types of cans represented here. But um, for now, uh, we hope we, that you all enjoyed this this overview of some of the, the cans in different regions, how they're made, uh, what they're made of, and even learning a little bit about Anna's obsession. And if you see her in a grocery store, you might want to just give a little space so that you don't get pulled into her obsession and walked out of the grocery store by a manager. Not that that's ever happened. It hasn't happened.
<laughs> anyway, check out more at packagingschool.com. There's lots that you can learn there. We've got courses for uh, not only cans, uh, plastic, glass, a little bit of everything. We'll see you next time.